Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seving. This is our Triangle Masterclass and today we are making four at a time no waste flying geese. I love this method of flying geese because I feel like it's the most accurate one out there and you don't have a ton of waste where you feel bad about getting rid of all the little triangles that you cut off with the stitch and flip method and whenever it can be super accurate that is always a bonus. As always, you can use these video tutorials just to know how to make the technique, or you can follow along with our quilt along, and you can use our pattern Raspberry Sherbert for that. It's going to use all of the units that we are learning how to make in this Triangle Masterclass. And also, if you get a kit while we have them available, you can get that pattern for free. That's all over on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe on YouTube so you can get lots more tutorials like this for free and also make sure to hit that bell notification so you don't ever miss a video and head on over to our website to sign up for emails there you can get special 10% uh, off your first purchase when you sign up for emails plus we'll make sure you get all of our content as well by emailing you when we have new videos and fabrics all right, let's get started. All right, we're starting each video with a little bit of math. And if you are doing this and the pattern is written for these, uh, this method of flying geese, you don't have to do any math at all. But if you have a pattern that's written for stitch and flip flying geese, or you're making your own or changing the size, this is all really good information to know. Now you're gonna get four flying geese, that's why I called four at a time flying geese, for all of these goodies. Now, our flying geese that we're gonna be making in today's video are gonna look a little different than my example here. We're gonna do two different kinds of flying geese from a, a look standpoint. For the pattern, it calls for half of them to be made where the uh, fat quarter is the larger triangle and the background is the smaller triangle. And then half of them are going to be reversed. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video where the background is going to end up being the larger triangle and then your wings are going to be these smaller ones. So what you're going to need is your center is going to be your big square. So it's reversed for this. I know it's a little confusing, but I got a little excited and made all these last night. So you are going to take the finished length of your flying geese and you are going to add one and a quarter inches to that to get your length, the size of your large square. Then you're going to take the height of your finished flying geese and you're gonna add seven eighths of an inch to get the size of your small squares. So you're gonna need four small squares and one large square to get four. And that's the math, it's super easy and you end up using a lot less fabric that this way than with the stitch and flip. All right, so let's get started. So you're gonna flip all of your smaller squares over and you're gonna draw a line from corner to corner on the wrong side. Again, just like everything else, you don't need anything special to make this. No special rulers, no special tools, just a six and a half inch ruler, a marking tool of your preference. I really love these friction gel pens and then a rotary cutter, of course, because you've got to cut and trim things to size, but that's it. You don't need to get a special ruler. You can just use a lot of the tools that you already have. Now, I'm making these lines pretty dark so you can see them on camera, but as long as you can see them, you will be good to go. The one thing that's really important when you're marking these is to make sure that you're marking right into the corner because we're going to be sewing a scan quarter and seam down both sides of this, and if you've marked it off to the side a little bit, then one half of your block is going to end up being a little bit too small and you're gonna have a hard time getting everything to fit together just right. All right, so I'm gonna set two of these to the side. We don't need them right now. But what we do need right now are a large square and then our smaller squares. So I'm gonna line that up and get my top points together. And then I'm gonna line my bottom one up and get the top points together. Now, in reality, I do this. I will have a whole stack of my saw squares with the lines drawn with the wrong side up, and I will just grab them and put them on as I sew. But when you're doing this for the first time, I would take a little bit extra time and do these extra steps. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. 
All right, so you can pin at the top here and at the bottom here, but where it's really a good idea to pin when you're getting the hang of it is to make sure that these lines are going right across each other. It should be going nice and straight through. And then I'm gonna pin right there to keep everything nice and together. We're gonna switch to the hard surface because then I can get everything nice and lined up and I can dig right into that surface and get that pin right in place because I wanna go across both of those points. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stitch down one side, stitch down the other side, and then we're gonna be able to cut it apart and have the start of our four at a time flying geese. All right, now I am still sewing with that scant quarter inch seam. And if you need a refresher on why we do that or how to set it up on your machine, head back to our half square triangle video tutorial. We go in depth in it on that one. All right, so I have now come past that area where they're both together. And I just like to hold my finger at the tip to keep those corners together. Then when I can't hold on to it anymore, I just move my finger to the right to help maintain that scant quarter inch seam all the way down. Now you can chain piece these and do a whole bunch all at one time. I recommend that you do. But for the video, I'm just gonna do one. So once you get down to the end, you're just going to turn it around and stitch down the other side. Now this is a really good time to do some quality checking. We wanna make sure that our block is lying nice and flat. That means that we didn't stretch out any of those bias seams when we were sewing and it looks pretty good. We also wanna make sure that our seam is a little bit less than a half inch, but more than three eighths of an inch. And this one is, we're doing good there. We also wanna make sure that we don't look like we're going crooked. You wanna make sure that your line was straight down the center and that you've got about a scant quarter inch seam on either side. You don't want it going any more to one side than the other, otherwise that side's gonna have a geese that is a little bit too small and you're gonna wonder why. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut it apart because everything looks pretty good. Now it's not super important that you're right on this line, but you also don't want the seam to be too skinny because if it's less than an eighth of an inch, then those seams can pop open with use or even when you just put it on the long arm to quilt it. All right, so now we're gonna press this open. And by pressing it open, we're gonna ensure that we don't lose any of the fabric. So if you watched our hourglass one, that was one of the few times when I do press to the side because the benefit of having that uh, seem to join really well at the center, outbraid the downside of having it sometimes get a little too small. But when you are pressing seams under the dark side like this, it means that you eat up a little bit extra fabric. So that means that these little wings get a little smaller. So if you're ever trimming your flying geese down and you're like, wait, it's not the right size, probably you ate up a little bit too much fabric just in the act of pressing it open. And there isn't really anything you can do about that unless you press your seams open. So I like to hit that from both sides. And at this point, normally people who have never done this method before look at it and go, how in the heck is this going to become a flying geese? It just looks like a heart. Well, here's how. The next step is we're gonna put this down in between. We're gonna sew a scant quarter inch seam down both sides our drawn line and when you open it up you can see that it's starting to look like a flying geese. Now if you want to pin this in place you can but all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other two squares that we didn't use at the beginning and I'm just going to line them up so that the corners are even with the bottom of my little heart shaped looking piece and then when we stitch if you're sewing your scant quarter inch seam, it should come right in where these little valleys are. You're gonna stitch down here and then you're gonna come back and stitch up here. And that should give you a perfect flying geese unit. All right, so again, I don't normally pin these all in place. I normally have a stack of these and a stack of these and I will just get them in place as I sew, but feel free to do whatever makes you more comfortable with getting accurate flying geese in the end. All right, so I'm just gonna line it up and again, we should be starting to sew right where those two come together. So we're getting our edge lined up over here and we're just gonna stitch now. These are really kind of fun to chain piece because that little heart kind of fits into the point of the other. And you can just stitch it right in and there's no overlap. When you're all done, just pull it out and go down the other side. All 
All right, so now we've got two of these and we're just going to go right down the center cutting that. And again, you can really see really well that these lines just came right out in the center of that. It didn't so much on this side, which means this one might be a little wonky to trim down, but they're looking really good. All right, now we're gonna press these open to reveal our four flying geese with zero waste. We're just gonna trim off a little bit on the ends and we are good to go. So that is my favorite. Cause I feel like when I have all those tiny little things, I feel a little guilty about it. And I did one time make an entire pillow out of my extras, uh, but it was so much work and I don't really ever care to do it again. And so that's just not my jam is working with all those tiny little pieces. So this is by by far my favorite method and I feel like it's also the most accurate. All right, so now it's time to trim these up and there is no shortage of specialty rulers on the market to trim flying geese up, but I just use my six and a half inch ruler for everything. I'm gonna show you how here. All right, so we're gonna trim this up to two and a half inches to by four and a half. And in this case, it's really good size. I can make sure that my four and a half is right over here. And then my where my two and a half inch mark is hitting the edge, that that's right even right there. Now, ideally, your point is gonna be about a quarter inch away from the edge, but don't worry if it's not perfectly there, it'll be totally fine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the side. I'm really not cutting too much off, a little bit off of there and a dog ear, not a big deal. All right, so now I'm gonna do a 180 degree flip. Now here's where that ruler comes in handy. We're gonna get our 45 degree line so that it's going straight up the seam into that corner. And now I've got my four and a half and two and a half coming here. It actually is a little wider, but I, what's more important to me is that my points are going right to the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that B just a little, it's like not even maybe a 16th of an inch wider than four and a half. I'm gonna let that stay because I want that edge to be going straight, that point to be going straight to the edge and I can fudge a 16th of an inch. That's not a big deal. So you can see here, we did not trim very much off. Here's another one for example, but it looks so much better and it's gonna be a lot easier to sew together because we are able to have units that are almost exactly the same size. Obviously this one is a little bit larger than four and a half on the bottom there, but it's gonna be totally fine. We're gonna be able to, to fudge that and we're gonna go over that in our next video when we put everything together to show how to make things work if they aren't exactly perfect because let me tell you, nobody's ever exactly perfect. Whoever invented the concept of the humility block was totally faking it. Nobody has to insert an error into a quilt. We all have them without trying. Don't worry, you're not alone in that. All right, I'm gonna finish trimming these up and I actually have a couple uh, that were problem ones that I saved from the other ones so that way I could show you how to work with that. All right, so this one, I don't know if you can tell by looking at it, but you can see that this one is just really coming in. I must not have cut it exactly right. Um, so when I line this up, it's, it's actually crooked. It's going off to the side. Instead of coming out to four and a half, it's going out to four and three eighths. And then it's also coming out over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use my fingernails to kind of pull that dog ear over. I'm still making sure everything is nice and lined up at the bottom here and here. And I'm gonna give that a nice trim along the top just to get that top nice and straight as I can. Then when I flip it over, I'm gonna line it up again and I'm, again, I'm mostly concerned at this point that we're a full two and a half inches tall, which we are, and that my uh, angle is going right out to the corner because I really want that to be nice and straight. And then same with this. I really want my corner to be meeting at the edge of that ruler. And just by giving it that little bit of a tug, I was able to kind of make it want to come a little more this way. So we'll go over this in the next video, but you can see that this, it is four and a half inches long. It just is not, uh, it's a little crooked. But once we get it pressed, no one is ever gonna know and it's gonna appear straight in the final quilt. So this is gonna be no big deal that we had to fudge that a little bit because it was a little off, a little small. Here's another problem one. This one is a full 16th of an inch longer than it should be. But I'm still gonna fudge that, I'm still gonna make it work. So what I'm doing, I got everything lined up. I've got my two and a half coming out to the edge here. So that way my diagonal is meeting right where the two and a half inch meets the edge of the 
ruler. Everything's looking good up top as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a trim. And then when I flip it, I'm gonna completely disregard where the four and a half is. Cause if I were to cut that, then I would cut off my entire tip of my triangle. And then I'm gonna have a really hard time making that look right. So I would much rather have things be off a little bit in the seams and, and have to ease in a little bit than cut off a point and then everyone knows that you, you messed something up. So we're gonna talk about fudging it in the next video in our triangle masterclass because that's critically important to having your triangles look right in the final quilt. And let me tell you, my long armor is constantly raving about how flat my quilts are. And let me tell you, I fudge stuff in every single quilt to make them look right, but they turn out flat as long as you know how to do it correctly, which we'll go over next. So what I'm gonna do, I'm completely ignoring this. If you are less than the 16th of an inch off, which this is pushing it, but it's it's gonna be fine, um, then we're gonna be okay. So I've got my 45 degree going here, and then I'm just gonna trim off the sides and the dog gears here. So now we have a flying geese that looks right, and that's what matters, because when I put this down, and I put it in there, you can't tell so much that it's off. I mean, obviously it's a little bit longer here, but when I sew this together, I can line up my corners here, and then I can line up my corners here, and then I can, as I'm sewing, give it just the gentlest tension. And then that will flatten it out and you won't be able to tell when it's all done. So we're gonna go over that next in our uh, next video in the series on putting everything together. So don't miss that one. That is a must watch for anyone who wants to get their triangles to look fabulous, get your points exactly where you want them to be, but also uh, know that we're, we're human and we're not gonna produce perfectly square blocks blocks 100% of the time. Probably 98% of mine are right on and where they should be, but even I've got ones like this where we're gonna fudge it in just a little bit. All right, well, thank you for following along with our Triangle Masterclass series. I hope you've enjoyed this one and you're gonna be giving it a go. I, once I started doing flying geese this way, I never wanted to do them any other way again. I think you're gonna love it too. Now, just a reminder that you can use these videos just to learn the techniques and that's perfectly fine. But if you wanna follow along with us and make the quilt, Raspberry Sherbert, you can get the pattern over on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. It includes all of the triangle units that we're making in this series, and you'll be making the block as we make it in our next video when we show how to put it all together and make sure those triangle points end up where they should be. You also can get a kit while supplies last. And if you're able to get a kit, then you can get your pattern for free. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube, hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything, and sign up for emails on our website so you can get 10% off on your first purchase. Until next time, happy quilting. Cool